One of the highlights of WrestleMania weekend is always the Raw after WrestleMania. It's become its own little thing to the point where WWE is doing network specials about it. You know, it, it's kind of a combination of many factors. You've got uh, the, the feelings of the WrestleMania weekend that's already been, you know, basically really the whole WrestleMania week. This is kind of in a lot of ways the culmination of it for a lot of people. You've got a lot of the hardcore fans that came into town for WrestleMania staying around the next night to stick around and watch Raw. You've got uh, the blow-off from what happened at Mania. You've got launching off into new stories. You've got potentially some matches that could be better than the matches that we saw the night before between the same people actually at the show that was more important at WrestleMania. You've got some returns. You've got some debuts of new talents. You've got all these different things that combine into being, uh, honestly, one of the must-see WWE shows, the very few that we get every year. Even if some years it's better than others, uh, in recent years at least, the Raw after WrestleMania does not disappoint. It's at least something you can feel good about sitting through for three freaking hours. So as I'm sitting there watching Monday night, here comes Brock Lesnar, here comes Paul Heyman. All the glory of beating Goldberg at WrestleMania and blah, blah, blah. And as Paul Heyman starts to go into the spiel about what happened at WrestleMania, and looking ahead for Brock Lesnar and what's next, what challenges he might have, who he wants to face. Who does the crowd in Orlando start chanting for? Finn fucking Balor. Not in some dumbass trying to hijack shit way. Not just in some way saying, hey, we really like Finn Balor and we want him around and we want to see him right now. They're chanting it because they want Finn Balor to come out and challenge Brock fucking Lesnar. Now, I know that I get this unfair reputation for being a muscle mark. I know I get this unfair reputation for being a hipster of wrestling. I get this and that. But at the end of the day, sometimes when I say mean shit about hardcore fans, it's because these stupid motherfuckers deserve it. If you really want Finn Balor versus Brock Lesnar, you're being fucking ridiculous. How stupid can you fucking be? First of all, what the hell has Finn Balor done to deserve this? The answer is nothing. How'd that last force push go? Oh, we have him beat Roman Reigns only because of the fact we're trying to make Roman eat shit and like the taste of it because he happened to like a little Adderall. But then we have him be Roman so that way he can go on and face Seth Rollins for the title. He beats Seth Rollins for the fucking title only to get hurt in that match and have to surrender the belt. And then he's out for half a fucking year. So the guy who basically lasted a couple of damn matches on the main roster, you want a rocket ship right back to the top of the fucking card. Now, so many people hate Roman Reigns for his perceived and actual force down your throats. But if we did this with Finn Balor, this would be fucking fine? Bullshit! It's fucking ridiculous. How about he proves he can stay healthy? How about he gives us a couple of angles that are actually good before we shoehorn him in against arguably the biggest remaining attraction we have in WWE? On top of all that, just beyond the fact that this asshat does not deserve it, it's ridiculously not believable. Like, who in the fuck would look at Finn Balor challenging Brock Lesnar and do anything other than laugh, fart, and or queef at it? Just the mere thought of it evokes all types of stupidity and mocking type of thoughts. Yet there are people that idiotically believe that this would be a good idea. I want to paint a picture for you here really quickly. Finn Balor, I don't know the exact measurements, but just a hypothetical guess, is probably what? Maybe six foot? Is he six foot one? I don't know. 195 pounds or so, if lucky. Now, I'm five foot ten, 215 pounds. So, I'm a little bit shorter, stockier, fatter, whatever you want to call it. But I weigh more than Finn Balor. Imagine me walking out the night after WrestleMania with more charisma and better speaking ability trying to challenge Brock Lesnar. 
and actually following through and fighting Brock Lesnar. If you believe in any type of reality whatsoever, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? Brock Lesnar is going to get a hold of me in that ring, and he's going to beat the ever-loving shit out of me. And he's just not going to beat me wrestling style, or MMA tough guy dojo style. He's going to beat me white person crazy type of style. The type of beating that a white person gets when they lose themselves and they keep going and they keep going even though people are trying to pull you off. Keep going and keep going even though you know you're about to kill this dude. You keep going and you keep going to the point where you've almost killed him, but not just yet. Because you enjoy it and you want more, more, more. And then what does he do? He fucking takes some of the brains that he's already beaten out of my fucking skull, puts them in between the slices of bread on his turkey and mayonnaise fucking sandwich, and eats it, and then beats off to the thought of kicking my shit in some fucking more. If you took a look at me in my current shape, without any MMA background, and threw me in there with Brock Lesnar, you believe that that dude is absolutely going to beat the fucking brakes off of me. And you're right, because he fucking would. So what in the fuck would be any different with Finn fucking Balor, who weighs about 20 pounds less than me? Oh, he's cut, he's cut. No, he's going to be cut because Brock Lesnar's going to bust that little bitch fucking open. And anybody living in any type of semblance of world of reality is going to think as such. You can talk about suspending disbelief all you fucking want to, but we can't live in a world of imagination when it comes to professional wrestling. Call the WWE the fucking Magic Kingdom because in order to think that Finn Balor going against Brock Lesnar in any way, shape, or form, any type of legitimate fight with any shred of credibility means that you are indeed living on imagination and pixie dust. Jesus Christ. I'm too big to be a fucking cruiserweight. Finn Balor's not. He's more legitimate as a cruiserweight contender than he is a world title contender, let alone especially when that world champion happens to be a Brock fucking Lesnar. Now you get the wise asses that will say, well, what about when uh, Rey Mysterio fought an Undertaker? Yeah, that's fucking dumb. And Rey was better any fucking ways. Oh, CM Punk fought Lesnar. You know, let's not bring up the fact of what happens when Punk stepped into the real fighting world. He trimmed down, got into a weight class. He got his shit kicked in. But let's say when you're in the wrestling ring where he was still about six foot one, 210, 215 pounds or so, again, bigger than Finn Balor. When you see him and you see Brock Lesnar, you at least had the hook of the Paul Heyman angle there. And you had the hook of Punk being a multiple-time world champion and being one of the best wrestlers, and maybe it's one of those any given night things. Finn Balor doesn't have any of that fucking shit going for him. And even then, you look at Punk, and you look at Lesnar, and it's not that believable. And for the smart ass that maybe says, what about 2004? And you fucking had Eddie Guerrero beat Brock Lesnar for the title. This is also Eddie Guerrero with years and years of pedigree and career where he never won a world championship, which Finn Balor came into WWE and immediately fucking did. Furthermore, you're talking about a Guerrero who, even though he was shorter than me and shorter than Finn Balor, was also roided up to the point of where it killed him a fucking year and a half later. He was 230, 240 fucking pounds. He was a slightly shorter version of the Macho Man at that fucking point in time. And oh, by the way, Goldberg helped him in that fucking match. Let's not forget. This is about as ridiculously unbelievable as when Daniel Bryan had his run in freaking 2014, where at the Royal Rumble, he couldn't even beat Bray Wyatt one-on-one, -on -one, but yet come WrestleMania, he's the fucking breakfast club killer. He's beating Triple H, and then he goes on to the main event, and all this shit's happening, and Daniel Bryan's shoulder's bad, but it doesn't fucking matter because he can no-sell that shit. He can send Triple H off. He can fucking make Batista tap, all the while fighting off Randy Orton, beating the shit out of him. At least, if anything else, you had the power of Daniel Bryan's character and the hot-ass story that was there at that time to overcome the fact that that shit was not fucking believable. And again, you have none of that with Finn Balor. All you're going to do is look at it, and anybody with half a brain whatsoever is going to take one look and go, and be like, why would I watch that shit? Oh, you might, Mitch might be good. Shut the fuck up. The fuck is Finn Balor going to do? He couldn't get through a match with Seth Rollins without getting hurt. Well, <laughs> Seth Rollins, what do you expect? 
what the fuck do you think is going to happen when a Brock Lesnar just suplexes his ass, even somewhat snug, let alone stiff? He's going to fall apart. Furthermore, you have Brock Lesnar, former amateur, NCAA heavyweight champion, former multiple-time world champion in WWE, current universal champion, former MMA champion, UFC heavyweight champion. It matters who he faces. You cannot, when you're talking about his MMA credentials and his amateur wrestling credentials, there's a reason in amateur wrestling and in MMA they have fucking weight classes. Picture this in the boxing world. If a Mike Tyson in his prime faces a Floyd Money Mayweather in his prime, no matter how much Floyd Money Mayweather tries to fight his chicken shit style, Mike Tyson's going to get one punch on him and it's good night fucking Irene. Mike Tyson's going to beat him worse than Floyd Mayweather beats his fucking women. Period. And if you think anything other than that would happen, you are fucking insane. There is a reason a guy like Mike Tyson fights people like Evander Holyfield and doesn't fight a Floyd Mayweather or an Oscar de la fucking Hoya. There is a reason Sugar Ray Leonard fought people like Hearns and Hagler and Duran and didn't fight somebody like a Mike Tyson or a Riddick Bowe or a Holyfield or a Lewis or a George fucking Foreman. Because there is no way in the world that anybody would believe that anything other than a ritualistic slaughter would occur. And when you look at Brock Lesnar, and especially over the past couple of years, the monster way that he's booked, you get to the point now where he's going to very soon cease to serve a purpose for WWE because you're just not going to have many credible opponents for him. And right now they don't. I mean, when you've got a guy like Lesnar and you package and present him in a certain way, the size of the performer has to matter. It doesn't always need to matter in professional wrestling, but in this particular case, based on the way Brock Lesnar is booked, the way he is pushed, the way he is featured, the way he is presented, the size does fucking matter. You cannot have this former amateur wrestling, multiple-time world champion, UFC heavyweight champion, tapping out to a bunch of 180, 190-pound fucking jabronis. The size and the performer does matter. And frankly, if you're looking at this point in time, who could you honestly throw out there against Brock Lesnar and believe in any way, shape, or form that they're a credible threat to actually win that damn match? And that's a major problem, especially when so much of what Brock Lesnar's done in the past couple of years, until you got to Goldberg, was so repetitive. It was feud against somebody, Brock wins, rinse, repeat. This is about as dumb as my suggestion that Ambrose should have went over Lesnar last year at WrestleMania. Once I saw that match, I understood why the fuck he shouldn't have went over. But Jesus Christ, who do you really have? John Cena? He's a 16-time world champion. He's beaten Lesnar before. I don't care how badly uh, Lesnar beat the brakes off him at SummerSlam in 2014. The fact of the matter is it's still John Cena. You got Breakfast Club bitches power. You would always believe if Cena faces Lesnar, there's a chance Cena can win. Similar thing with Randy Orton, now 13-time world champion. One RKO out of nowhere. But again, you look at Orton, and he can at least somewhat measure up. Like Cena can somewhat measure up. These are the type of guys that you throw against a Brock Lesnar. Not a fucking suspect sissy Dolph Ziggler or an Uber driver Sami Zayn. Or a fucking injury-prone fuckstick like Finn Balor. You got Braun Strowman. When you look at Braun Strowman, I shouldn't have to explain why that would be a legitimately believable opponent for Brock Lesnar. And then, of course, you've got Roman Reigns. As Paul Heyman was so sensibly trying to piece the story together and paint the picture for what may be the feature match at SummerSlam this year or even further down the road, WrestleMania 34, there have only been two people in the history of WWE that beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. It is Brock Lesnar. It is Roman Reigns. You cannot tell me that a Roman Reigns is a less believable opponent for a Brock Lesnar at a major show than a Finn fucking Balor is. Furthermore, for all those people that want to shit on Roman Reigns, and understandably so, at the end of the day, so many of you like their match that they had at WrestleMania 31 because of the stiff fucking way that they worked that fucking match. So why the hell would you not want to see that for a second damn time? I just cannot believe that there are so many damn people that are so caught up on the cock taste of Finn Balor that they want to push him not just into a big spot, not just into a world title spot, 
They want to put him into the spot against the beast fucking Brock Lesnar. How about he stays healthy first? How about he wakes, works his way up the card like others had to, such as Seth Rollins, such as Dean Ambrose, such as Roman Reigns? And if you insist on throwing him into a world title picture or a title picture, then either A, if he's going to stay on Raw, he has to go into the cruiserweight division because that makes no fucking sense. If he's feuding against guys that are 100 pounds bigger, why can't a Neville fight a fucking Brock Lesnar? Why can't an Austin Aries fight against a Brock Lesnar, a Jack Gallagher, a fucking Tony Nese, a fucking whoever the fuck? I like Brian Kendrick. I think he's a great talent. But I'm not advocating ever for him to face off against Brock Lesnar at a fucking major pay-per-view. If Finn Balor stays on there long term, he either should be feuding with Seth Rollins because Rollins is the reason he was hurt and ultimately ended up missing WrestleMania is the way you could sell the story, or he should be in the goddamn cruiserweight division. If you're going to insist on putting him in a world title picture, then you must throw him over to SmackDown, which would require AJ Styles to eventually feud against Randy Orton, where AJ Styles would take the title from Randy Orton, and then you could send Finn Balor at AJ Styles, and at least you've slowly progressed the size of your champion down to the point where AJ Styles is not that much bigger than freaking Finn Balor. It at least is somewhat believable in that grand scope of things. If you want to do that, then that's one thing. But damn it all, I understand wrestling is fake, but we don't need to present it like it's fucking fake all the time. And to sit there and throw out somebody who weighs 20 plus pounds less than me against the monster that is fucking Brock Lesnar is something that everybody should take a pass at, that everybody should oppose, that everybody should be pissed off at the mere suggestion of. Yet you've got thousands of knuckleheads in Orlando Hopped up on all types of good feelings because we're going to delete, 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 and oh my god, we can't wait for a shit stain. <laughs> that we get so caught up in the bullshit that we're advocating the epitome of a fucking midget facing off against a true heavyweight at a time where this company, the few true heavyweights that they have that can help carry the ball, we need to maximize them because the business has gotten small. The business has gotten too small. To the point where you have too many people that think that they could fuck up the world champion. And you know what? They might not be that far off. But that's the type of asshole that some of these hardcore fans want to send at Brock fucking Lesnar. Give me a fucking break. That's just stupid.